Dear sister, this morning while I was drinking my coffee, I was reading in the book of Psalms about the greatness of our God and about his loving kindness toward those that trust in him. Look what David wrote, For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you. In the day of my trouble, I shall call upon you, for you will answer me. There is no one like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours, for you are great in thus wondrous deeds, you alone are God. I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and will glorify your name forever, for your loving kindness toward me is great, for he has delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. Psalm 86. This song of praise reminds me of a scripture in the New Testament. It says in Romans 8, verse 32, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? God is not stingy. When we face troubles, we often pray to God as if He was unwilling to grant us our request. We agonize, shed tears, and plead with Him as if we have to wrestle the answer from His tightly closed hand. Nothing could be further from the truth. The two scriptures we just read tell us that our Heavenly Father loves us dearly and is eager to answer when we call upon him. He is more than willing to use his great power to deliver us out of our present trouble. After all, he delivered us before out of hell, the greatest trouble of all. To save us, he made the most costly sacrifice in the universe. He gave up his only Son, Jesus, to die for our sin on the cross. The Apostle Paul says that if God paid such a high price for our redemption, we can be sure he will freely give us everything else we need also. God doesn't get upset over the many times we ask for his help. He didn't put up a sign by his throne that reads, four prayer requests allowed per day per person. There is no limit as to how often we can come to him with our needs. We are always welcome and accepted. In fact, he invites us to come to him with all our needs and burdens. Matthew 11:28 says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 1 Peter 5, 7 Casting all your anxiety upon him, because he cares for you. Philippians 4, 6 In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. None of our problems is beyond God's power. Think about how God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. He simply spoke them into existence. He gave the breath of life to all the animals and the people he created. Ever since the whole universe and all life is sustained by his power, when Jesus walked on this earth, we could see the power of God up close. 
Jesus stilled the raging storm, multiplied bread to feed the hungry multitudes, walked on water, cast out demons, opened the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf, cleansed the lepers, healed every kind of sickness and raised the dead. There was not one sick or demon-possessed person he could not heal or deliver. Even a legion of demons had to immediately leave a man when Jesus commanded them to go. Lazarus was already dead for four days when Jesus called him out of the grave and he came immediately back to life. Because of sin, Satan held all mankind captive and we were destined for hell. Yet the power of the blood of Jesus cleansed us from all sin and set us free to become sons and daughters of God. And God wants us to know that he is willing to freely use the same divine power on our behalf if we cast our cares, needs and problems upon him. What's there left to do for us? Our part is to trust him completely that he not only can deliver us from our troubles, but that he will. That's called faith. Now since our Heavenly Father is taking care of our problems, we can stop worrying. He has all power and authority at his disposal. He doesn't need our help or advice to come up with a solution. The very best thing that will honor him is for us to start thanking him for answering our prayers, even before we see the evidence of his intervention. If we do this, his peace will fill our hearts and protect us from fear and despair even in the midst of the storm we are in. That's his promise. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Our natural human response to problems is the opposite of the instructions we read in this scripture. We get anxious, worry, and imagine the worst outcome. That's why we have to purposely retrain ourselves according to God's word. My dear sister, I encourage you to deliberately practice this new response the next time you encounter a problem in your home, with your children, or in your ministry. It will change your life. May the Lord bless you with his presence and grace. Your sister in Christ, Gisela Johannan